Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One News. Good afternoon, I'm Emer McKeown. Today's top stories. People who flout emergency laws on travel restrictions could be fined or jailed from today. A doctor at University Hospital Washford says the number of patients coming in with COVID-19 are being easily managed. A man is being treated at UHW following an alleged assault in the early hours of this morning. And in sport, the Premier League will follow Belgium's top tier and cancel the rest of its season. The Garda Commissioner says people who made it to their holiday homes must now remain there during the COVID-19 restrictions. New powers that allow Garda to enforce coronavirus restrictions are now in effect. Casey O'Riordan reports. The Garda Commissioner Drew Harris says while public cooperation with the guidelines have so far been good, things are starting to slip. We're seeing things like people exercising more than two kilometres from their home, people moving for non-essential reasons and we're also seeing house parties. Garda are now able to arrest people who refuse to comply, they could face a €2,500 court fine or six months in jail. Commissioner Harris says the Gardaí will continue to take a community policing approach. So we don't see this as a, as a situation of conflict. This is a situation of us all working together and, and acting together to, to, to minimise the spread of COVID-19. People travelling to holiday homes that are stopped by Gardaí will be told to return home, but Commissioner Harris has a warning for those who have already made it to their destination. So if you're at your holiday home now... You need to stay there. That is now your place of residence. Thousands of checkpoints will be in place nationwide from now until midnight on Monday to ensure people are not making non-essential journeys. Washford Garda Inspector Gavin Hegarty says people should not become complacent. Unfortunately, at the start of this week, we started to see a little bit of unexpected movements of people again, where people were starting to engage in exercise or try to go to locations to exercise or visit that were well beyond the two kilometres that were advised by by government. We're really appealing to the public now, especially over this weekend, that we really need people now to take on board what's being said and stay at home unless they're going out for essential reasons or for going for their shopping or going for medical prescriptions. And if they're going out for exercise, that they stay within two kilometres of their home. A doctor at University Hospital Washford says the number of patients coming in with COVID-19 are being easily managed. Dr Dunica O'Grady, Clinical Director for Medical Services at UHW, says physical distancing is working. He says we have to stick with the measures in place. You go down the road on the way to work and you meet very few people out. So people are sticking to this and as long as we can keep sticking to it, the spread will slow down. We will be able to stay on top of it and we'll take our advice from the National Health Service and the emergency management team as to when these restrictions can be lifted. But if we jump too soon, all of the effort over the past four to six weeks will be for nothing. So we've got to stick with it. He describes the efforts by staff at UHW to prepare for COVID-19. There's been an awful lot of work done. There's been a superb crisis management team. There's been huge willingness on the part of everyone in the hospital community to go the extra mile, to make the changes that need to be made, to keep adapting. And of course, we're having to try and think of new ways to do what we normally do to make sure that when an outpatient service has been restricted, that we can offer some other alternative. Patients have been very obliging in recognising that they can't come in and they're happy to take a phone call, get some advice that way. So everybody's doing as much as they can to enable us to be ready to adapt and ready to cope if and when the, the influx don't start. GPs say they're concerned at the drop in numbers of routine consultations during the pandemic. The Irish Medical Organisation is urging the public not to ignore other non-COVID-19 health issues. It says that could lead to longer term problems for patients. Dr Madeleine Nidali is a member of the IMO's GP committee. She says people should contact their doctor if they're worried about different symptoms. While we don't want anyone to turn up at the door, we do want people to pick up the phone and make a call to us, uh, particularly if they're having chest pain, shortness of breath, if they have palpitations, if they're feeling weak, if they have um, weight loss. Uh, so there's any variety of symptoms that we aren't seeing at the moment or aren't hearing from our patients about. 
A man is being treated at University Hospital Washford following an alleged assault in the early hours of this morning. The 52-year-old was found with head wounds in Monastery Street in Washford City at around 12.15am. Two males were discovered nearby and were arrested by Gardaí. It's understood that an axe was found at the scene. The 31 and 32-year-old men are currently being treated at Washford Garda Station. The British Prime Minister has spent a second night in intensive care due to COVID-19. However, senior ministers are now facing questions over who makes the decisions in Boris Johnson's absence. Andrew Louth reports. Boris Johnson is said to be stable after spending a second night in intensive care at a hospital in London. Downing Street says he is in good spirits and is receiving oxygen but is not on a ventilator. Intensive care consultant Dr Joe Cosgrove explains why a patient might need ICU treatment for a considerable length of time. The patient hasn't recovered sufficiently to be discharged to a general ward setting where they could continue their rehabilitation. That's not to say that their conditions deteriorated. Mr Johnson has asked his Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab to fill in for him as he continues to get treatment for coronavirus. However, despite this, questions have been raised about Mr Raab's pan- Hours and how limited they are. Former International Trade Secretary Liam Fox believes the government can continue as normal. It's about getting the arguments uh, um, out there so that everybody can understand the decisions that are being taken. And not everyone's going to agree on everything anyway. The point is that you come to a collective decision that everyone's willing to abide by. However, Dominic Grab has refused to say whether restrictions will be lifted this Sunday as planned. With the number of daily UK cases not slowing down considerably, it's likely they won't be. The government has announced emergency funding for five ferry routes, including four out of Rosslare Europort. €15 million euro has been set aside to ensure ferry services are maintained during the COVID-19 crisis. The routes Rosslare to Fishguard, Rosslare to Pembroke, Rosslare to Sherberg and Rosslare to Bilbao have been designated as public service obligation routes. The measures will last for a period of up to three months and apply to three companies, Irish Ferries, Stenaline and Brittany Ferries. Worshford TD David Cullinan says it's vital to protect the routes due to falling passenger numbers. It's to cover revenue costs, I suppose, or uh, costs in, in terms of the actual ferries themselves. It doesn't deal with the overall fixed costs of the company, but it will deal with the cost of, of providing the services to those ports. It's a short-term measure and a short-term solution for something that Sinn Féin had long argued for should be a long-term solution. And I welcome the fact that it's been put in place, and obviously for the South East, to maintain that connectivity for businesses and have those supply chains to Europe continue is obviously very important. Chinese authorities have lifted a two-month lockdown in Wuhan where the coronavirus pandemic began. It led to over 2,500 deaths in the city. Travel restrictions have now been eased as the outbreak has been brought under control and thousands of people have started to leave. WLR Sport, Ireland's local station of the year. The Premier League will follow Belgium's top tier and cancel the rest of its season. That's according to the sporting director of Serie A club Undenese, Pierre Paolo Marino. Liverpool are 25 points clear at the top of the table and the league announced last week that its current suspension would continue indefinitely due to the coronavirus pandemic. Marino has claimed on Italian TV that Premier League bosses are ready to sanction an early finish to the current season. Tottenham say their record goal scorer Jimmy Greaves is being treated in hospital. Spurs say they're in touch with the strikers' family and will be providing further updates. Next to golf, European Ryder Cup captain Pork Harrington has told BBC Five Live that it's unlikely the Ryder Cup would be held without fans. The clash of the US and Europe is due to be held in Wisconsin at the end of September. Formula One hoped to hold a Canadian Grand Prix later this year after the race became the latest to be postponed due to COVID-19. It was due to be held on the 14th of June and is the ninth event in this season's calendar to be called off. The first scheduled race is now meant to be in France towards the end of June. Finally, to cricket, England World Cup winner Ben Stokes has been named Wisden's leading cricketer in the world. The all-rounder has unseated India captain Virat Kohli, who held the honour for the past three years. Stokes is also the first Englishman to claim the title since Andrew Flintoff in 2005. WLOR asking you to stay at home. Our next bulletin is at two.